guys have seen the video that we did during the day, I would like you guys to go and visit it. Incredible video that we did, and you can be you can be informed of what's going on in the hood. All right, so if it's your first time to come across this channel, please do yourself a favor and subscribe. Make sure that you ring the bell so that every time I'm live, you'll be notified immediately. I also want to send some love and respect to my regulars, people who always dine with me. They come around here, then we have a conversation. By the way, if you are here and it, maybe it's your first time, make sure that at least you comment respectfully. We do not want people are disrespectful here. That is definitely not going to be tolerated. Um, yeah, you've seen the headline that we are going to be looking at tonight. So, Tendai Bidi confronts or he bastardizes Zan PF and ANC. You know, he was in South Africa. That's what, um, you know, during the, that was the a daily Mavericks, um, you know, meeting. And Mazimai, good to see you, man. Welcome. Don't forget to like the live so that at least we can all move along. Inviting everyone else to come to the conversation. Tashi, good to see you. We need to have a very strong conversation tonight. So, yeah. It's quite interesting. The Liberators scheme against opposition parties. No, it's ANC and, um, and it's on PF. And when I saw this headline today uh, that was on news, news Day, I was like, ho, ho, we are tired of this drama. You know, we want to move forward in a peaceful and loving manner. This can be the Zimbabwe that we want. You know what I mean? Where people can actually gang up and begin to scheme against our destinies. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Brothers and sisters, gone are the days where we could just sit and watch. And uh, now we're going to definitely go. Ah, uh -uh, guys. Aye, waka. Gwadze kunyara zakat arika. Yes, we are having conversations. We speak about stuff that are important. Um, and guys, I want to tell you, I think following Chamisa, or oh, maybe talking about Chamisa is becoming a lucrative business in Zimbabwe. I'll tell you why. <laughs> I'll tell you why. I'm seeing this. Okay, I think before I even say much, I'm going to have to play. We have to be meeting in Zimbabwe. What other people are coming through to join us? It's very, very important because this is, this is one of the most shocking, shocking, um, you know, message that I saw this evening actually on Twitter. And I was like, on X, and I was like, ho, oh, oh, ho, not again. Definitely not again, y'all, not again. They're after Nelson Chamisa's blue movement that they haven't even started. Now they want to sue him for the blue color. Yo, this is crazy. This is crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. Honestly. Are we dealing with human beings or animals? You know? to see everybody and i'm so glad that you guys are here so i said like i said earlier on i think talking about no chamisa it's a lucrative business there's one thing that actually shocks me especially when i look at the youngsters if i can remember the story of sevia kasukwire when that nick love demon came through literally fought him in uh, in the court 
you know, he didn't, he didn't fight him in the court. He was simply just a vehicle so that he could achieve the goal. I'm looking at those young people and I'm asking myself, do you even think about your future whenever you are being robbed into doing the dirty work for, for evil people? Do you even think about what's coming for you in the future? Because this season that we are in, we will pass. And the future is definitely coming for everyone. What will be, what will be your, your future? Honestly. Because I'm looking at this guy called Blessing. Do you remember one of the presidential candidates? His name is Blessing Kasia Muru. So I heard that he's, he has got a political party called ZIPP. First of all, I've never seen him campaigning. I never seen him even having dinner with a group of people, even coffee or tea or just sitting in a chart. I only saw him on the ballot box. I only saw him on the ballot paper, sorry, as a presidential candidate. So he's, he's, so he's saying that he's suing Nelson Chamisa for the blue color. <laughs> he's suing Nelson Chamisa for a color he never used. It's simply um, a rhythm, a speculation, it's gossip. He said, I'm not associating myself with any political party. So I'm like, why are you suing Chamisa? You're suing for what? Go take the blue color and go ahead and have it. Unbelievable. So this evening, I'm seeing this, this news here um, that they said IPP, President Dr. Blessing, President, listen to me, President Dr. Blessing. So this is guy is a president for IPP, but he's also a doctor by profession. I'm talking about Dr. So-and-so who did maybe diploma. If he was a smart guy, he may not have done that, maybe a degree. And then he went to honors. He may have exemptions if he was smart. Zimbabwean men are smart. Zimbabwean people are smart by nature. So maybe he did masters. And then he went to do doctorate. So a man who went to do doctorate, he is suing another man for a collar. I'm talking about blue collar. Right? <laughs> He's filed an agent. It's an agent application um, to bar Nelson Chamisa from using a blue collar, arguing it's a registered trademark of his party since 2016. And Nero is using blue collar to confuse ZIPP supporters. Nero is a copycat. So this is what they are saying. Nelson Chamisa is a copycat for using the blue collar. It's a business for most of these a useless guys in Zimbabwe, I'm sorry. I'm saying useless, they use useless. I've never seen them doing absolutely nothing. I don't even know who this guy is. I mean, Monzora is better because we have seen Monica campaign trail. Linda is better because we can see him talking. Have you ever heard anything from a guy called Blessing Kasia Muru, this guy? Have you ever heard anything from him? Quite disgusting and embarrassing. It's humiliating for any man, honestly, like a man in 2024 who can act like a child. It's sad. So it's a business for people to literally just pursue Nelson Chamisa is their project. Did you all see what was happening today? Literally when he was in Mashingo, the mirror reported people, you know, were, were literally laying there, you know, Mazambi, I could hear him. Yo, listen, who can tell me that the man is not anointed? <laughs> you know the power of the anointing? You know what the anointing does? It can break the yoke. What does that supposed to mean? All the yokes are going to be broken, yo. <laughs> the anointing can break the yoke. Nelson Chamisa is just getting in the shop, minding his business. The, where the shop went on fire. We saw people literally going crazy. Right. And then you tell me that the man is not anointed. You're crazy. I've seen him. And I went, came back. I said, the guy's anointed. I know. I know how the anointing works. I know. I know how the anointing works. And for Zimbabwe to be out of this evil that we are in currently, we can see evil right in front of our eyes. We can see people bragging. We can see arrogance at the highest order. And we're doing absolutely nothing. But that's what happens. Forget about Chingumacharisa. That's what happens when God is about to show up and showing off. Yeah, you're seeing people act like they've got it all together or they've got the power and God is going to come through and say, let me show you who is actually powerful right here. So yeah, blessing. We are following the story. Again, you guys love the quotes, right? Love the quotes. Okay, Chamisa can use black color, yo. And the people can say, we follow you, sir. You can wake up tomorrow and use, I don't know, whatever color you call, and the people are still going to follow him. It's not about the color, it's about the anointing. It's about destiny. Yeah, he's connected to people's destinies. It's time. If God says he must be a leader, there's nothing, yo, you and me can do to stop it. It's the time. A season. It's time. Okay. 
Yes, so Chavis said, on my way from Chivi, I made a brief stop at a local supermarket in Mashingo. I'm in awe of the deep love you show me. Thank you, Zimbabwe, for the trust, confidence, and encouragement. Um, it can only be of God. You will never be disappointed. God is in it. And I agree. We'll never be disappointed. Like I said to you, even if the entire country cannot back up Chamisa, I in my house, I'm going to back up him up in prayers. We'll fight there in the spiritual realm. It's not a joke. It's fire for fire in 2024. We're we not going to mess up with our destinies while we sit and say, we're going to just watch you. No. If God says by this time next year, I must be there. There's nothing anybody can ever do to stop it. It's time. <laughs> it's time. It had to take only two men. It took only one woman to stand against the Jews that were almost being murdered. That was Esther. It only took three men in Shadrach, Michigan, a bad nigga, to fight against dictatorship and tyranny in their time. It only took one man, Daniel, they threw him in the, they threw him in, in the lion's den. And in the midst of the lion's den, God showed up and he showed off. You don't need to be 50 or 500. No, no, no. As a matter of fact, God does not want to use many people because when there are many people, there's confusion. You remember when Gideon was on his way to fight the battle? God said, drop all these soldiers. If they can drink water in the wrong way, leave them. I don't want them in the battle. Are you surprised that majority of people misbehaved recently? Because they're not part of the battle. Those who are part of the battle, it will show soon. We are almost there. Yeah, we're almost there. We are almost there. Now, we move on to Russia. So, uh, this was a joke, but again, a joke, but that really meant a, a, a lot. So, that is what pushing on laughing. He said, Putin, Nana Monzuravake. So, Putin eliminated the, another, another container was very strong. You saw him, he, he passed away recently. He was jailed, abused, and then killed while well, he was in prison. I don't want to lie, guys. I don't know how this world will progress, but I find people are just sick in their heads. What is leadership compared to love and peace? As a matter of fact, when you show people love, they love you back. There's no need for you to eliminate any leader. You know, if you love people, they'll love you back. It is that simple. But yeah, that's what happens when people think that power will take them to heaven. Ask him, Mugabe, what happened? He said, I'm going to rule even in the grave. Maybe he's ruling, I don't know, but uh, is he? So he eliminated all the strong contenders. So he declared himself a winner by 87%. Again, like I said, I may not say much about Putin because some people are saying, oh, but you don't know Putin. Oh, by the way, like I said, I'm not, I don't really care. I focus on people who are treating the other person well. You treat people the way that you want to be treated. But the moment you are abusing your neighbor, to me, it's like, no, I don't care what you can do, right? But as long as you think can eliminate competitors then doesn't work by the way she was there she was uh, talking there she was they were observers there and you guys you saw what was happening last this past weekend you saw people burning the ballot boxes in russia you saw it right but Chigumba said the elections were peaceful free and fair and peaceful that was Chigumba said i'm not surprised i'm not surprised ma'am <laughs> are you y'all surprised that Chigumba said the elections were free and fair in russia Considering what you saw on social media, people were burning ballot boxes. Quite interesting. Now, Mr. Tendaibit, I'm sure it's time for him to, he's trying to redeem himself from all these shenanigans that happened last time. I don't know if he's redeemed somebody. He's just really an authentic man in terms of what he says. But you know what I've been thinking? We seem to be in a community where truth can always be, you know, meaning something different. So in other words, if you say something that is right, because people already charged, they may not even get some t take some time to actually understand what are you trying to say. Because they're angry. They just bastardize you. And they don't even have time to say, you know what? We differ in our views, but we can still love one another. But he had a strong, a really strong a speech that he gave at a Daily Maverick that is in South Africa here where he was. Um, but he, he, one of his guys, I think he's, he's his spokesperson or he's his uh, cheerleader or his assistant. His name is Emmanuel Zilas Gumbo for today. But he said his, his neck for unpacking global challenges demonstrates an exceptional level of intellectual capacity and knowledge. His dedication to understanding and addressing pressing issues on both local and global scales is truly admirable and serves as an inspiration to many. So he's referring to Tendai Biti. 
the work that he does. But we want to really take a listen to what your neighbor just said. But I also, during the day, I played the video of, um, of Tabombeki. Tabombeki bastardizing ANC. And he was calling them Umugodoi. Yeah, and you know what that means? It's quite a very vile word. I mean, when you think about it. But when you see politicians or elders start using those words, it means they are very angry. They're angry with corruption. But, uh, you know, ANC and Zon PF, by the way, this group of my brothers, ANC and Zon PF, they are literally just selling propaganda, selling lies to people in terms of the history of what truly happened. Because don't forget last week, the elders in South Africa here were saying, but Zon PF did not help us to fought the apartheid regime. They didn't help us. I also saw a video when Mugabe was like, I just sing again, I up. I sing again. I, I heard him saying that. But they are always saying, no, we are still supporters. No, we fought together. You know, you remember Changwa when he was at the forefront, pushing the narrative, a lying narrative. And the elders were saying, it is a lie. South African elders were saying that it's a lie. From NC, we as MPF said that we are allies. It's a lie. They never helped us to fought the regime, the apartheid regime. But here we are, Tenebiti, making it clear to them. He said, PF and NC are nothing but an embarrassment. Well, I completely agree with my brother. They are an embarrassment, a shame in this era and how they've really turned our countries into jokes, unfortunately. Please take a listen to Mr. Tendaibiti speaking. At Macro Woodmeet, Wood and trying to buy a computer for myself. And you know where the computers are? There are those huge television screens. The time was around 11 a.m. and the power just switched off. And I screamed, ah, welcome to Zimbabwe. <laughs> and part of our challenge in Southern Africa is the control of the liberation ethos. All right. Over 200,000 citizens in the sub-Saharan region live under liberation movements. ZANU-PF in Zimbabwe, the MPLA in Angola, right. Frelimo in Mozambique, SWAPO in Namibia, Chama Chama Pinduzi in the Republic of uh, Tanzania. One could argue that Botswana too is under liber a liberation uh, a, a movement. But the challenge with the liberation movement is that, yes, they carried out a historical task, an important historical task in the pro process and struggle for decolonization. But the honeymoon was short-lived. Right. In my own country, we are still paying a price for a war that finished 44 years ago in 1979. You will not get a job in the public service, a contract in the public service, unless you have got the badge of having participated in the liberation struggle. 69% <laughs> of the poorest people in South Africa vote the ANC. In Zimbabwe, where I come from, the ruling party finds dominance in the rural areas where poverty is the order of the day. <laughs> so poverty is weaponized. Right. Ignorance is, yeah. we is, is, is weaponized. True. And I hope that the citizen gathered here will understand that on the 29th of May, you have a historical mission of taking your fate back into your own hands. I thank you very much. Thank you. A few months ago... That was Tendai Beauty there um, uh, when he was attending the Daily Maverick, um, you know, conference incredible speech right there incredible speech and we had south africans clapping for him in other words south africa is having elections this year they have, they have the power to change the trajectory or the mess that you're seeing right now people are just being played the corruption is so deep the syndicate is real like i'm asking myself questions you know are you really there to work or you're just there to loot you're just like looking at criminals gangsters because then if you speak up, you're out. <laughs> they eliminate you just like that. Very sad indeed. Very sad. It is very sad. But it is, it is our responsibility, uh, the youngsters, to stand up and do what's right so that at least we can cap this mess. Otherwise, we're in trouble. We are really, really in trouble. Yeah, when I saw this headline, I was like, hold on, hold on, hold on. What the hell is going on here? You know, there are papers that I do follow very closely, and I know that they don't just put out information there. They are honest here, excuse me. And this is literally the news day. So the news day is reported 
quite a very intense and very sad headline. They said liberation movements plot against opposition parties. Get this right. Liberation movements plot scheming against your destiny. The youth like us, the liberation movement, and it, when, when they say liberation movement, we need to be, we need to be careful with those statements. Girl. They are simply talking about individuals, like maybe few, some of them never even fought the, in the struggle, but they're just claiming to be fighting in the struggle, screaming around and say, I belong to this, you know, but they don't even know what that, what, what, what that was about. They never did nothing, but they're just claiming that they fought in, during the struggle. So these liberation parties are coming together. I don't, I don't, you remember they've got a meeting, um, you know, um, in uh, the Sadak people have a meeting in Zimbabwe, I think in preparation of the summit, that's what they're saying. But I'm going to read really deeply the, the article that news day sends out. Quite sad, sad, extremely sad article. So they said, this is Farah Marapira, you know, the spokesperson for ZANPF. They said, um, ZANPF, South Africa's ruling African National Congress, ANC, and other regional liberation movements are meeting the Victoria Force beginning today to craft strategies to push back, get this, to push back the opposition party's onslaught to remain in power, Newsday has learned. Zimbabwe is the chairperson of SADC. Liberation Movements is hosting the summit this year. Remember, uh, Zimbabwe is going to be taking the chairmanship, which I don't know how is that going to happen on the bedrock of sanctions and on the bedrock of illegitimacy that we're still, you know, <laughs> dealing with it as we speak. But I'm going to read further because the police said also a lot of things there. It's a very, very um, interesting, um, you know, article, packed with so much. And like I told you last time, I don't take words lightly. Words are powerful. I don't take words like I take them as they are. I don't think, oh, I think maybe I think they try to say, no, they're very clear here that they are plotting to push back opposition parties. And I remember here in South Africa, I remember my, 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 a guy that I respect, Mupo is a youngest guy, 28 years old. He's also fighting to be, you know, he already qualified to be on the ballot box. But immediately when Ramaphosa uh, actually uh, declared that you need to have 60,000 signatures for you to qualify to be on the ballot, because I think they're trying to avoid just having people for the sake of. And I remember he was angry and furious and said, what is Mr. President Ramaphosa doing what he's doing? But he went on, the dude is going to be live on that ballot paper. And I, I respect him. And kudos to you, Mupo. He's also writing a beautiful book that he says, I'm the vision. He's an intelligent dude, young guy. But uh, when you're saying they're trying to push the opposition party, these are the people we're referring to. The youth, the EFFs of today. We have the IFP, we have DA, we have you know, different parties. So they're saying the NC is in bed with some PF pushing back all these opposition parties. This is actually the Newsday reporting. They also say the summit is being attended by Secretary General of ZANPF, NC, People's Movement of Angola, Southwest Africa People's General um, Organization of Namibia, Botswana Democratic Party, and Chama Chama Pinduzi of Tanzania and Mozambique Frelimo. The summit is a follow-up to a recent meeting held in Tanzania where the liberation movements vowed to forge closer ties against the opposition parties, especially during elections to ensure they are continued to hold on power. The meeting agreed, uh, agreed to pledge solidarity with those sister parties whose countries will be holding elections during the course of the current year. Partly reads uh, a communique released after the Tanzanian summit. The liberation movements have, have been known to side each other, um, even in disputed elections. The Victoria Falls summit comes ahead of the 44th um, SADC summit to be hosted by Harare in the August this year. President Emerson Mnangagwa will assume the chairmanship of the 16th member bloc, taking over for the, from, from current chair. President Joao Lorinsko from uh, Angola. Mnangagwa assumed the SADC deputy chair as position during its 40th, 43rd sorry, summit held in Angola last month. ZANPF Director of Information, Farah Marapira, confirmed the liberation movement's meeting in Victoria Falls, saying they are coming to meet in Victoria's Falls to discuss pertinent issues obtaining within the SADC region and other issues affecting us as liberation movements. That's what he's saying, Farema Rapira. He says, 
Father Marapira, when was he holding a gun and even fought in the struggle? But listen to what he's saying. He's saying us, referring to also him um, as the liberation movement. Father Marapira, are you, what are you talking about? But he's saying, you know, I said, the young people just hijack this to the, for, you know, for personal benefits, which is disgusting, than just standing and be honest with each other and saying, I don't belong to the movement, but at the end of the day, I just came here so at least I can benefit, you know, with impunity. I can benefit with impunity. So this summit will also sees on PF handing, handling over the chairmanship to the NC. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Okay, let me drink again. What? Okay. Hmm? Okay. This summit will also see Zanupi of handing over the chairmanship to the NC, which has been on a rotational basis because of COVID-19. The parties have not been able to meet. All right. Okay. Marapira refused to shed more light on the agenda of the meeting. I will not say much because I do not want to jump the gun, he said. All right. What does he mean by saying, I do not want to jump the gun? What jumping? What gun? Okay. Our ears are open wide and our eyes are actually very much wide. Meanwhile, a SADC preparatory team led by the regional bloc's deputy executive secretary, corporate affairs Judith Katera, was recently in the country to assess her race preparedness to host the summit. You remember the lady, that lady that was being asked by journalists and she was not even able to comment on the issue of the elections. The team visited the new parliament building which will host the event and also assess some of the hotels that will accommodate delegates. So I think it pays it to be part and parcel of your good life. I'm not surprised why some of them can't even stand for what's right. It's the good hotels, presidential suits, you know, top luxury lifestyle. You know, you are being treated like a, you know, a god. How can you not support nonsense even when there's nonsense? You know what I'm... <laughs> It's not when you have never had that opportunity on your own as a person, or hard working money, and it's your first time. Police have also increased surveillance. Get this right. Police in Zimbabwe have increased surveillance and patrols amid speculation of planned demonstrations by opposition figures ahead of the SADC meeting in protest of Amnangagwa's assumption of chairmanship post. Oh, okay, so there's going to be demonstrations. Oh no, these are saying the speculations that the opposition parties are looking at, at actually uh, rallying against the President Emerson Nagago's post. I don't think really against his post, but I think against the sham of election. And I think also so the issue that they are talking about illegitimacy, I mean, you know, it has been on the cards. So I guess that is the main reason why people are really pursuing this issue. They went on to say police have in the past week been all ordering bars and nightclubs to shut down early raising concerns of security threats in some high-density suburbs. National Police Spokesperson Assistant Commissioner Paul Nyat told Newsday in an interview that the deployments were normal and policing would continue despite an event. Police have a mandate to maintain law and order in the country, Nyat said. The public has nothing to fear, especially those who are not committing any criminal acts. If bars are dire to their operating license, there is nothing to fear. He added criminals are taking advantage of the bars that close late to pounce on houses or individuals. So we are trying to control such criminal acts. Policing has to continue on a daily basis regardless of any event. So there were speculations that people may be looking at demonstrating. So if, if that um, if there's the summit is coming, I mean, later on in August, is it August? So maybe they are saying they're prepared to say, you know, there can be an uprise uh, from all corners considering the situation in the country. So the police are working tirelessly to make sure that that won't happen. Okay. All right. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna, when, when if I talk about the police and I think about this issue of the gun, you know, what, you know the guns that were smuggled in the country and they later say that they were toy guns? That story is still like, it makes me wonder, ask a lot of questions every time. And I'm like, who doesn't know the difference between a toy gun and a gun? All right, guys, I think it's time for us to really speaking out, Zimbabweans. I know sometimes we get too relaxed, you know, and say, I don't want to talk about politics. No, I don't want to talk about politics. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I don't want to talk about politics. But politics are doing us so big, eh? Doing us so big. And I'll tell you why. There are allegations that South Africa, no, Zimbabwe apparently, 
is going to be supplying clean water to South Africa. These are allegations. Zimbabwe is going to supply clean water to South Africa. You just heard what I said now. So, hope watching on, um, he, he sent out a message on X that you can feel the pain in this man's voice because you're going to listen to the man who's actually talking. He's a white guy. By the way, when I heard this story last week, I didn't believe it. I was just like, how ah, people just talking gossip? You know how people are to cause a bit of a stir. But to my surprise, it's actually true. It's what South Africa is saying is true. So, you're going to listen to them speaking. So, hope watching on, he said you can feel the pain in this man's voice when he talks about how South Africa is now getting purified water from Zimbabwe and how it pains him so much that South Africa can't do this for itself. That's number one. Perhaps this is not the full story, but this is a man with pride. He can't believe that something so important for South Africa is being delivered by Zimbabwe. Wow. It's like, is there anything good that can come from Zimbabwe? Okay. Sadly, Zimbabwe is going through a drought but it is selling water. It can feed clean drinking water into all urban homes, but it is selling the water to South Africa. So the pain is felt on both sides of both borders. At least South Africa will be getting clean water. It's cheap, cheap, remember? Cheap, clean water. Something which is, which is a pipe dream for ordinary Zimbabweans. One thing that I've realized here is that, um, honestly, I've been in South Africa for nearly 20 years now. This country made me who I am. <laughs> I am who I am. I actually understand South African culture more than Zimbabwean culture. But I also think that as much as maybe we're getting things, Zimbabwe feel like they own South Africa something else. But I want you to listen to what this guy said because it is so, so important for you guys to listen to him. Most things we make, this is where we are now. Zimbabwe will be supplying clean water, you know, to South Africa. But we all know Zimbabwe does not have water. We also know, and I've seen articles, really. I'm going to have to look in those articles that have been sent out by Trevor Ngwe. Uh, Trevor Ngwe has been talking a lot of, uh, sending out a lot of articles out, talking about the issue, how, how the Chinese are benefiting from Zimbabwe more than the Zimbabweans. You literally saw what's going on in the relationship between Russia and Zimbabwe. You saw Vanashi Gumba were in Russia, literally. Shigumba was in Russia. And the other groups, you know, as say the observing elections, I've told you earlier when, when we started. You, you remember the air ambulances that came in the country? The air ambulances you saw came from Russia. You also know uh, there was a time I heard that the Russians had actually a Belarus story. Belarus. So we, we seems to be a, a country who's always like getting aid from different corners, you know. So we're going to listen to him speaking about the issue of the water. Very heartbreaking, honestly. In my opinion, it is, it, it is heartbreaking. Take a listen. African neighbors, South Africa and Zimbabwe. Well, the two have signed a deal. And the deal is that one of the countries will supply treated water to the other country. Now, there was a time a few years ago where we would have immediately gone, that's South Africa, that's nice of us, we're supplying treated water to Zimbabwe because we know just how poorly their infrastructure is being handled and how the ZANU-PF elite care only about feathering their own nests and don't care about the supply of hygienic water to people who are not part of the ZANU-PF elite. But guess what? Zimbabwe is going to supply treated water to South Africa. And the Water and Sanitation Minister, Senzo Mkunu, describes this as an incredibly significant act. It is! If South Africa's water infrastructure, the ability to treat water to usable levels and deliver that water to people in South Africa who can use that water, has collapsed so far that we have to import such treated water from Zimbabwe, then how bad have we got, folks? How bad have we got? Two African neighbors, South Africa and Zimbabwe. I've been in Zimbabwe many times. 
people don't even have water, running water, except they have their own boreholes. Then it connected to my plastic tanks on top of their houses, majority of people. This has been going on for years, if not decades. But we are hearing that they're going to be supplying clean water to South Africa. Zimbabwe will be supplying clean water to South Africa. <sighs> yeah. Ah! You know... People may not want to hear the truth, but I'll tell you the Zimbabwean problem is, is very much spiritual more than what you can ever think. This is it's a deep spiritual problem. It's so real and it's, the, it's so thick that it does not need, you don't have to be weak to deal with this kind of situation. And um, man, this is sad. Wow. They were, oh, I remember there was a time I also heard that they were going to supply electricity. I, you know, guess yeah, the, you know, you hear things people say and then you, you play around with it. And you hear how many times Zimbabweans literally wanted to do business in the country and they, someone, someone, someone would just block them. But we see Chinese, we see Russians, foreigners can do as they please, South Africans as well. I some of my friends, their fathers owns minerals, the mines there in Zimbabwe. Yeah, I'm going to tell you facts. You're going to pray for this country, y'all. Yeah. Do you know what I said? I actually said to someone uh, that um, if you really think that we are in bondage, like, like I'm talking about the majority of Zimbabwe, we are not in bondage. The people you are calling elites are in bondage. There is no way any father under the sun, hear me and hear me well, no father under the sun who leave his kids and go feed another house <laughs> when his kids are hungry or a girlfriend's house except there's something that is in control. No person can do something like that. In its normal sense. That's what's happening here. Yeah. Our problem is a spiritual problem, whether you like it or not. And some people can say, no, it's, there's nothing called dictatorship. It's simply evil. Nothing called dictatorship. That's what I don't like about the dictionary. It sanitizes wrong. Now people don't know that, that there's a difference between right and wrong. They only, it's dictatorship. It's, no, 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 it's not dictatorship. It's evil. There's no person... Who can take water? We know, <laughs> Blawai, they don't even have no water. Blawai has been struggling with water. You've seen how many times the report that there's no water. But no, water is going to be, if it's true, it's going to be supplied to South Africans, clean water. They said purified water. But let me tell you, there's this water here right now. If I stand up on my tap, it's going to affect this water here. It's from the tap in my house. From the tap. They have tap water, clean tap water, running day in day. I've never, I've never had a problem with the water, not in my lifetime. But now they're able to bring some purified water for them, right? But you don't even have water. Your taps don't even have running water. Yo, we're going to have to ask to look at each other in the face and say, what the hell are we really doing? What are we doing? Yeah. When you think you've seen it all, I know, and now I've really seen it all. Yeah. Now I can understand. You know, um, yeah. No, 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 no. Now I can understand. <clears throat> it said... It's really, really sad. I told you about the issue of the color, which is people are discussing right now about Nelson Chamisa and his color, that they're saying you supposed, you know, it was someone's color. But let me tell you that God is a God, y'all. And um, I know some people may not understand, um, but you know, I, what I love is, you know, I've been, I've been, I've been um, um, in a follower of Jesus Christ literally all my life, y'all. But it's one thing to hear about God. It's another thing to actually experience, you know, what you call evil that most of people experience, you know, you know, before time. 
And they came out of them, those situations. That's the era that we are in in Zimbabwe. It's the old era. You see people, you know, dishing out cars. I think you've seen the issue of cars that is circulating now and the fights that are going on right now. Be the discussions between, um, you know, Thomas Mafumo and Wikino Shivayo. Wikino thinks that he can own Mafumo. Mafumo is a god. He can own that man. I don't buy it. Mafumo was very clear that he is not. He said he, he was laughing at uh, this musician that, no, they're doing what they're doing because of poverty. And Wikino Shivayo went after him and said, no, he's talking, he's talking literally nonsense. That's Wikino Shivayo for you. Um, he said that, um, you, knew, you know, uh, Mafumo must apologize to me in order for me to actually be able to buy him a house and buy him a car. You know, one thing that I love about what Wikino Shivayo said, that is very important yet to note, is finally he has admitted that this is simply ZANU-PF that is dishing out cars. Finally, he has put it in black and white. That is us, ZANU-PF, who are dishing out cars. That's what I love about it. Because people are speculating, even though people knew more or less that it was, but, but you know, he had to, had to endorse it himself and say, it's us, ZANU-PF, who are giving out cars. And talking about Mafumo, that he, he really was there during the struggle. You know, Mafumo was, um, <laughs> let me tell you, any, <laughs> my favorite musician is literally like in the secular space, it's Mafumo, you know. Kumbata na we maso jemo zambi gine Zimbabwe. Ah, what are you talking about? Um, you know, Kumbana Matema, you know, Shimurenga 98. Yeah, I can drive from here to Zimbabwe playing Shimurenga 98. I love that man. I love Mafumo so much. So Thomas Mafumo, apparently, he's being challenged that he must apologize for what he said when I was having an interview with Nehanda in order for him to actually be able to get a car and a house. <laughs> Wiki no Shiva is challenging Mafumo, the goat. You know, you understand what I'm saying? The goat challenging Mafumo. Ma, in, what, what on? Like I said to you, I've been like Mafumo has been like, uh, I respect that man. If there is a concert in Zimbabwe, I'm going to go to Zimbabwe to go and see Mafumo. Just there to go and really see him sing because I respect that man. And I love him so much. His music, I love it. I respect him. He's a father. He's an crazy, amazing person. And I have so much respect for him. Deep respect. Um, now he's being challenged by Wikino Shiva to apologize for the truth that he spoke so that he can be given a house. What? What? The level of disrespect that man has. Wikino Shiva, Lord, I'm... I feel for him, Shem. I really feel for him. I think he's becoming a psychopath. You know what happens is, let me tell you the danger. You see, you see, you see why God had to give us an opportunity to grow in money? It's because he knew that there will be a time that we have to be understanding how to balance the two, right? So life is in phases and people in sizes. So you always have to be allowed to go through the process little by little, but while you're growing. But here's the thing, when you get exposed to money without the stamina, you go crazy. You can go mad. Now, in the words of Mike Tyson, he said, if you think money will give you happiness and joy, you've never had money in your life. You've never seen money in your life. He was right. See it, which is vile. Zungu. Mudana, komana ane zungu. Kupa parika. Apana, 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 apana. Ane zungu. Ane zungu. It's challenging. Mafumo said, and this is he made it clear. You know, Thomas said, Mafumo, I said, tap you, Banayo. But take a listen to me, some of more speaking. I took time to wear some words, Mukanoga. Take a listen. Saga Mugans, Mota, you are Mokanya, Tora and Mota, Norambere. And then the Zangu Motgarigai. Can I go to the family Motgariangu in Gura? No Motgariangu. In Nina and did his Zogubas in Zevamu. Die, die, O Muna, Noba. Dinema, <laughs> 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 
inina andini zwe kuba zini zwe wamwe dae dae o muna anoba ndi ndaka 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 manji sabota wana awa nasi ndaka ndaka ndine mafamu ndine mamwe masmotikari ndine mamari ndi hita swa ndino uda andini siri haisiri okai ndi angu hai and I agree with Mafumo. Remember when he sang the song, Munye Kamono Maita Corruption. You remember? And he also sang a song, Mambembe. You remember that time when he fought with, with, um, with Robert Mugabe? He's not that type. He's too classy for that. And let me tell you, I mean, not have all, I don't have even have money that people are busy dishing out. But if they come in to put a billion dollars, I won't take it. My principles won't allow me to. Because let me tell you, for me, it's about the blessing. I'm already blessed. I can command it, anything in the world. Because I'm blessed. Imagine taking one billion dollars and walking around with a curse. Not in my lifetime. No. No. Zanpe Valo. No. Try other people. Game. They came here. Oh, we can pay the whole. Oh, we can give you more. We can do that. No, 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 no. Listen, try someone else. Not here. We don't take money for nothing here. We work for things. I, I thank God. I thank God who removed me earlier in that place. Otherwise, I could be messed up mentally. I'm very much inclined to my truth i can't be bought with money nobody under the sun my blood is bought you know jesus christ bought it let me tell you you have to die for my for me <laughs> sorry <laughs> i can't sell my soul to the devil it doesn't work like that in my life no and no thank you no thank you so respect for my I, I knew that my will never disappoint I never, they my fumo and I can put it they will never disappoint and let me tell you Kandoro shout out and by the way Kandoro I owe him so much because Kandoro was clear he said this is not weakness work it's some PF's work simply using because I need zungu but let me tell you when things go wrong ah! check what's going on with Martinara right here Martinara tried it now they are suing him he's being sued for being having a big mouth, I can't wait for a day that um Chivayo was gonna have his day. It's coming. Yo, they always say don't play in the camp of the devil because when the devil is in the neighborhood, he's gonna come and knock at your door, like knock, knock, knock. I'm here. So, Mr. Chivayo, <laughs> we are just watching from a distance. <laughs> you know, they can use you like a tissue and throw you just like that. Zikama Koma, relax. Chill. Shh. Because it's known. They don't play games. They are users of men and they will dump you. Because he was even lying that um, he was telling Mafumo he had a number that he was saying Thomas Mafumo USA. And I knew it was all a farce and a lie. Lying that he was being called and Mafumo have agreed that he was going to apologize and get a car and a house. Really? Talking about Mukanya? It is sad. But that is the country that we are witnessing in 2024. Sad. That's what we are witnessing. <laughs> Quite very sad. Quite very, very sad. And also, to my, like I said, Kandoro deserves some uh, respect. Do you know that Say Colors, you know Say Colors was given that white Mercedes Benz. You remember Say Colors, the one with the dreadlock? My brother with a dreadlock. Apparently, he has released a song. It's called E.D. Fair. <laughs> he was right, Kandoro, that you will see how young people will line up to do dirty work for some people without getting a cent. And they're going to come through because everyone is begging. Left, right, and center people are begging. I can only imagine having a kind going to pack it only at your one room, Mercedes Benz. You are sick in your head. Why well, they didn't buy your house. But you know why? Because it's not about what you're thinking. You see when those cars are being collected back, I don't know. Some people say we've got papers. Whose garage is that? Use your brain, y'all. You use your brain and you think. Don't just do things you think. Right. But he has been releasing a song. It's called E.D. Fair. You know, E.D. Fair. Because I can't, for, 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 no. you can all go and check it out. You know, go and check it out and just listen to the song that he has released. <laughs> I can't play it here because I don't want some copyright strike on my stuff here. No. So go there and hear the song, E.D. Fair. They already started to campaign. Hmm. That's why we are not also stopping campaigning. We're also campaigning. Everybody's just campaigning for a better Zimbabwe. We all want to see a better 
um, Zimbabwe. It's Zimbabwe for everybody, right? Mm -hmm. Now, the Supreme Court, there's a man by the name Kamushinda. Kamushinda, that's his name. Apparently, this guy, um, so the Supreme Court nails Kamushinda for 30 million US dollars bank hest in Namibia. Huh? Those are the people that you call the elites. I don't know you much, but uh, he seems polished, you know. <laughs> he seems polished. He looks polished. So, Inoki Kamushinda, a Zimbabwean businessman, has been accused of looting nearly 30 million US dollars from the now defunct small and medium business in uh, Namibia. So, he's being nailed 30 million US dollars. Quite uh, interesting and sad. But interesting said, you know, so Chamisa, he said, I'm very touched. Uh, there's a year old man who spoke there and very, very uh, heartbreaking. I saw it. I wanted to cry like uh, in me, emotional me, you know, <laughs> emotional me. I'm naturally an emotional person. Um, so he said, this touched and moved me. It's not easy to carry the hopes of a 99 year old and many of our senior citizens. One really needs to pray for, for broadened shoulders. So I help me God. And I pray that God helps you, Chamisa. I pray for you honestly, and I pray, and I mean it right now, that I go. I pray that God gives him the grace to stand. I can only imagine, imagine is at the age of 46, yeah, I'm 41, so 46 is very close. That means like five years, you know, difference. And I can only imagine, I, I can't even stand some of the challenges that I face, and I can only imagine what he's going through as a 46-year-old. The punches from the left, right, you know, south, east, worst, it's not easy. But take a listen to this old man. Honestly, emotional, emotional so speech. Well, I do know, Ziva. I see President Wawo Aripanyo Nasi. For speech there may god bless him um man yeah that's why i always think that we need to go and meet in zimbabwe yo. we need to go to zimbabwe drop your blue hearts yo we can still move after i'm okay we have still gonna get another regalia <laughs> you know and we get them you know you 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 close our well we're gonna dig another one you close the wall we will dig another well Honestly, we are not giving up. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
So don't ever forget no, that I told you they're going to be pushing water. There's going to be electricity. Yo, you and me, we must just hold hands and fix the country. That's the only way out. We're going to have to fix the country. Um, yeah, the Zimbabwe we are talking about, it has to be fixed. Let's hold hands, yo. Together we can, and together we never fail. The moment we unite and hold each other's hands, yo, we can't lose. The enemy will not win, not again. Not again this time, y'all. We're going to stand firm and do what is right. Let's come together. Exhort principles, and that is it. With well, the principles, you will never fail. I love you all, and may God bless you, and may God bless Zimbabwe. And I'll see you again tomorrow, y'all. Sleep tight. We've got a long way to go. So much is happening in our corners, and we need to have discussions. This time, nowhere, the devil is nowhere to hide. Y'all, nowhere to hide. <laughs> and do tomorrow. I love you. And bye for now. <laughs>